All right, here we go. Godfrey, welcome back. Welcome. All right, what's up? What's up? You know, we're still, we're getting through it. It's July. Damn it. You know what I mean? July, my birthday month. It was the 21st. I'm always open for presents still. And uh, I wanna, I'm want i wearing my, like, my Negro League baseball shirt. Shout out to the Negro League 100-year anniversary. Kansas City, they, they have the, uh, the museum in Kansas City, Negro League Baseball Museum. If you're ever in Kansas City, check it out. But it's the 100-year anniversary of the Negro Leagues. Respect Pittsburgh Crawfords. I don't know what a Crawford is, but I don't give a shit because I love the Negro <laughs> Leagues. And with the way things are looking, we might have to reopen the Negro Leagues. Fuck that. <laughs> have our own goddamn oh. leagues. Fuck this shit. <laughs> Well, I know because just this morning, yeah, uh, the, the Marlins announced that they're canceling their opener. They're canceling their opening. Their opening. Their opening game, yeah, because eight players and two coaches have tested positive for coronavirus. Corona, yeah, it's um, well, baseball. You should be able to play that shit because it's so spread out. <laughs> I mean, football maybe, but baseball, and basketball, and football can be canceled because it's very close contact. But baseball, that's crazy because you can still kind of six feet apart. You know how far you are away in baseball? Well, I mean, but if you're on, on a base, then you're right there up on that person. Just Well, I mean, just don't cough on them. You don't touch them. When you're on a base, you don't touch them. Baseball is very possible. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? I mean, if you're, you're on a base, but the person ain't touching you, though, you feel where I'm coming from? So, and then they got so many players. I, are those important players? If those players suck, fuck it, keep playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, you ain't that good anyway. We good, shit. <laughs> you be on the bench. <laughs> All right, well, because basketball started, and but they did the whole bubble thing. Yes, yes. Right, see, and that's the whole thing. Like, basketball did the bubble, and football and baseball did not. And now football and baseball are in shambles, while basketball seems to be going okay. So basketball, have you watched any games though? Uh, I watched a few like highlights. What is it? Was it good? Is it like exciting in the bubble? Is it bubble, bubble, bubble uh, action? Well, I mean, there's no crowd. There's no crowd. So, so okay, that's so. Yeah. So you lose that. Rascal. You lose that. It's kind of nice though. I, I I like to see. I like to see a bunch of brothers playing. And it kind of freaks me out though, because when I look in the audience, it's just white people. So it's nice to have nobody there. So it doesn't look as bad because you know why? Considering all the shit that's happening with the racial tension that's always been around, but it's it's ex escalated with the Trump supporters, with the with the killings of with the police brutality. It's kind of nice to just see black dudes playing with nobody watching because I think it would be kind of an insult that the NBA would continue playing after like Kyrie Irving was like, I think we should like sit down and not play because of the shit that's going on. But everybody's like, nah, fuck that, we need to play. And of course, Stephen A. Smith, of course, put his two cents in, which, uh, you know, I'm a Stephen A. fan back and forth. But then T Stephen A. Smith, you know, he had to throw in his, no, you need to play. What are you doing? I mean, are you kidding me right now? We need the NBA. You can protest a different way. I do not agree. Of course you don't agree. You know, I mean, I thought Kyrie Irving had something. I think he was right. Like, hey, why? You're not answering. You're not listening to what we're saying about police brutality. You're killing all these black men, but you want us to still play basketball. It's, the, it's like that lady who told LeBron to shut up and dribble, bitch. You know, told him to shut up and dribble. And it's like, so all you see us is, you just see us as workhorses for you, athletic workhorses. You know what I mean? That's all you see us is these athletes or these sexual objects or these, it's always that objectification of black people but you don't see us as human beings. So that three-fifths of a human mentality is still around. When you can't even just go, yo, and I keep trying to tell people, you keep killing black men, we're the ones, they're the ones that are the ones that they, those are the NBA players. Those are the football players. Those are the, I'm sorry, but black men are the trendsetters, huh? For all these, and a lot of these cops, like I said, I'm talking slow nowadays. Not every cop. But the cops that perpetrate and that do all the violence, and there are black cops that do it, there are Latin cops that do it, there are Asian cops, obviously, that do it. But the ones that do it, the white ones that usually, usually there's a white cop versus a black male. The ones that do it, I go, yo, dude, you're one of the biggest fans of football, basketball. You should be way more lenient on black men. 
because you see them as athletes, but then you got this, you compartmentalize your hatred. And then when you see them on the street, and if you don't know them, like if a, if a cop stopped Michael Jordan, they'd be like, oh man, Mike, what's up? Man? Well, you're going a little fast, you know, uh, have a good day, you know? But if you're just a black dude, you're just like, you know how fast you were going, motherfucker? Now it's like, wait, I'm not famous enough? Cause you gotta be like a super Negro for some of these cops to leave you the fuck alone. You know what I mean? You gotta be like a recognizable Negro. If you're not a recognizable Negro, you're fucked. You know what I mean? So that's why I pray like that people know my comedy and shit. When cops stop me, I go, <laughs> go oh, you the comedian. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like if they don't see you in that light of entertainment or fame or whatever, they just see you as that just kill this black motherfucker. That's sometimes. I'm not saying all the time because I've had I've been stopped by cops that didn't know who I was. And they weren't nasty to me. You know, and there's some cops that have been nasty to me. So I want to make sure I'm talking real slow, everyone, so no one gets this shit fucked up and twisted. You feel where I'm coming from? Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. Well, I remember when I interviewed D.L. Hughley yes. uh, about a year and a half ago, he had written this book called How Not to, How Not to Get Shot. Right. <laughs> and And one of the chapters in the book is how black men always match the, the description of somebody. Yes. Right? So he suggested that everyone dress like Flavor Flav because he's not matching the description of nobody. <laughs> with, a, with a Viking hat and a giant clock, you are not getting mixed up with anyone out there that's committing any crimes, let me tell you. He's like, who was it? It's Flavor Flav again. God damn it. <laughs> and I, I, hey, here's another suggestion. Dress up in the in the team that you love. Dress up as a football player or a basketball player. Say, hey, man, I'm sorry, I'm going to practice. Okay, go on. God damn it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just dress up in a sports uniform. You know what I mean? Because it's like that's it seems like that's the only time they respect you. Because, I mean, you literally see these guys talking about, hey, did you see the game last week? You know, the cops would be in, in you know, all together. Yo, you see the game last week? Oh, it was fucking great, yo. He scored like 40 points and you're fucking, oh. Hey, and those a bunch of niggas over there. Hey, shut the fuck. You know what I mean? It's like, what, what, what is that? I mean, we're, you know what? The, the, the regular average black man and black woman are the same people as the LeBron Jameses, the Beyonce. It's the same people, guys. Stop fucking separating them. And that's, that's just to me kind of a sick, that's like sick as fuck. And they're like, yeah, we need the NBA. Please. We need the NBA. We guys need, we need you all to play, but. Like Mike Ditka just made a, a, a comment. And you know, Mike Ditka's from Chicago. I respect Mike Ditka because he brought us a Super Bowl champion, but of course the, the the players did. But Mike Ditka was a great coach in Chicago, but he goes, I, you know, if people don't like the national anthem, they should leave the country. No, we don't like that motherfucker, dog. And we're not leaving the country. And if you're talking about immigrants and people that don't belong here, you're every white person needs to go back to Europe. I'm saying if we technically talk about who does not belong here, white people, you need to go back to Ireland. You need to go back to Germany because the Midwest is mainly Germans. Go back to Germany. You need to go back to Italy. You need to go back to all your countries. You know what I mean? And black people should be able to decide, okay, you were forced here. Now the Africans that got here can go back too because they actually have a place to go back to. You understand? Like me, I could go back to Nigeria, you feel me? Because a lot of the Africans, Indians can go back, the Chinese can go back because a lot of immigrants benefited off of black labor, slave labor. And a lot of immigrants that come into America get all the benefits of opening up businesses and they leave it all, and they don't give it to black people who are have the right to have that shit. Because, you know, you know, you've, you've heard this over and over. America was built on free labor and it was black people. But then they had Jim Crow, Reconstruction. They, they fucked us 8,000, 800,000 times. And yet we have what? 0. 0.111 of the wealth here. We barely get any of the money for anything to open up any businesses. And you wonder why some of our black businesses are janky and fucked up. You know, so and 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 so everybody is literally benefiting off of black labor, which is fuck up on all levels so that's all we're just asking for a little justice and i have to give credit to ice cube for writing out 
sort of a memorandum for, for you know, something. But Ice Cube wrote out a, a sort of a contract to the United States. And he says it still needs to be fixed. It still needs to be redone. But at least Ice Cube came out with a structural, some kind of memorandum, like talking about the things that we deserve for African-Americans, which I think is fantastic. And I say we because I'm American and I've been treated like shit. But I think that the, the people who are descendants of slaves should get all the benefits. I'm not talking, you know what I'm saying? When I say we, I'm talking about black people, but the people that ha are connected to have a slave history and the, pe the black people that don't have a connection should get something different just from being discriminated against, but not what this, the people who are descendants of slaves, the ADOS, they should get what they deserve. You know, not the immigrants that aren't, that aren't connected to slavery. Well, right, because I remember you and I had a, a clip that went pretty viral yes. about my thoughts about uh, reparations. Yes. And <laughs> originally I said that I don't think that cash reparations are going to happen right. for uh, right. American descendants of slaves right. just because I didn't think that the U.S. was going to come up with this much money. But then coronavirus happened and America started c cutting trillion dollar checks to everybody and giving loans to people who didn't even need it, like Kanye and, and you, you know Shake Shack you know and everything else like that. So, and I remember when I interviewed D.L. Hughley uh, a few months ago, yeah. I actually said this publicly. I said, I'm actually reversing my stance on this. I actually do believe in cash reparations for African Americans. Uh, you know, I'm admitting that I'm wrong. Oh my God. Vlad, I'm admitting that I'm wrong. Vlad admitted that he's wrong. That is a, that is historical. That is a moment in black history. Vlad. <laughs> Vlad admitted that he's wrong. What's the date today? What was that date? Here I hear July 27th, 2020, and a moment of black history that Vlad admitted that he was wrong about reparations for black people. <laughs> Well, and here's the thing. Yeah. I'm admitting that I'm wrong because there's been new information since yes. I originally made my statement. Yes. And I would rather admit that I'm wrong than to never evolve. No doubt. That's what we're here, man. That's what we're here for, man. Growth. It's not, see, we have so much ego in us that we don't, we don't, that's, it's a lot of our shit, a lot of the reason why we have blocks in communication is because of ego shit. It's really ego. I don't want to hear what the fuck you got to say. I'm not, <sighs> That's how you don't learn, man. That's how you don't grow. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, Vlad, you got enough enemies, man. Damn. Why don't you learn to grow, man? I got some too, but fuck. <laughs> well, let, let's go ahead and proceed right. with, with some current events. All right. Um, the oddest of which yes. has to be Tory Lanez allegedly shooting Megan the Stallion in the foot. I, I just... I, I didn't see this one coming because, you know, the story comes out... Yeah. And you hear some sort of altercation happen. Tori got arrested. Then you hear Megan got arrested. But then it's like, oh, no, Megan got shot. Oh, she got shot in the foot. During this whole process, I wasn't even thinking that Tori was the one that shot her. Right. No, not but at all. But apparently this is the story that's coming out. Now, neither party is actually speaking about it publicly. Right. But allegedly this is the story that Tori Lane's shot Megan the Stallion. Like, I just don't get it. Man. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> what? <laughs> and and just hold on. And 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 then and then you you kind of start to think like, okay, well, was it like a, a lover's quarrel? Like, no girl, you're not leaving. Pow. Pow. You know, and then and then you think like, okay, wait a minute. So so Tori is five two, maybe a hundred pounds, and oh. Megan is five ten, the probably stallion. about two 200 pounds, so she got about 100 pounds on him yeah. at eight inches. What happened before? Because we had posted this video of her bragging about beating up her ex-boyfriend. Mm. Wow. Like literally beating the crap out of him until the police arrive and then getting arrested for it. Well, and she was like laughing and bragging about it. So was she beating the crap out of Tori and he just in self-defense shot her? Because... Right. Well, Not to you, say that's what you're supposed to do, but listen, if someone problem. way bigger than you is beating the crap out of you and you got a pistol. Well, you know, uh, Lil Bow Wow didn't do that when his girlfriend was fucking him up, right? This is true. He Lil, just took his L. He took his L because he's a man, and I think man strength still, I don't care how big a chick is, I think man strength will still knock you the fuck out. 
And I give credit to Bow Wow for not, I'm not going to hit you. I, I, I think that if Megan were to arm wrestle Tory Lane, she would definitely win. Well, listen, it, her name it, is, it, it, would, it wouldn't even be close. Her name is the Stallion for a reason. I figured a stallion too, because maybe she had a big ass, you know, because someone says, yeah, she built like a stallion. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what right. I'm saying? When they walk, they got that. God damn. <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking of, black stallion. But then you have the Italian stallion, Rocky Balboa, right? Because he could box, because he could fight. And maybe that's maybe what she was known for too, whooping dudes' asses. Now, does she always whoop? Does she always date little dudes, or does she date big dudes? See, seems like she dates little ass dudes because I don't know any big dude well, letting her. Well, be a, well, the story she was telling of the dude she was beating up. Apparently, this dude was like six nine. Did what? She, so, so she, she was putting up. hands on a big football player, and he let. Oh no, nah, he did. She didn't beat up no six nine dude. I'm sorry, dog. He let it, nah, man. I'm listen. I'm sorry, but six nine. I'm gonna make fun of your ass if a guy six nine. Literally, they were going toe for toe. Meg the Stallion was going toe for toe, and Michael Buffer was in the middle. And now, oh, let's get ready to move. And in this corner, from where is she from? Where's Meg the Stallion? Stallion from? Where's Meg the Stallion from? Texas, Houston. From, well. Texas, from Texas, where they're all corn fed, at weighing 200 pounds, 5'10, Megan, the Stallion. And in this corner, her boyfriend, 6'9, from where is he from? Who knows, but he's 6'9. Get, come on. I'm sorry. 6'9, dude, is going to knock you the fuck out. I think he was taking the beatings. He let her be, because a six foot nine man, I'm not, and ladies, please do not get mad at me about this. And you must agree with me. This is just science. It has nothing to do with misogyny or anything. But a six foot nine dude, he can literally punch you like, like, you know, the silly punch. He could literally force gump punch your ass and you're going to be knocked the fuck. Leave me alone. I'm not going <laughs> to use that word, but y'all know what I'm talking about. No! Bam! Literally, Bubba punch your ass and you'll be knocked out. I believe the guy that's 6'9", he took the beating. Like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, chill out. I don't believe she went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If she went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I'm wrong. That's a bad motherfucker. But Tory Lanez was like, I heard about your record. I've seen, I've seen your work. I've seen what you do to dudes. You feel me? But you ain't gonna do that to me. And he probably wanted to reenact that uh, Harlem Night scene when Eddie Murphy was fighting Della Reese. Oh, you wanna shoot me in my pinky toe? Eddie's like, I shoot that nasty black. Night. Keep fucking with me. You think I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot your ass? Watch, watch. Bam! And <laughs> she was like, this motherfucker shot me. He was like, <laughs> yeah. Um, he probably was like that short man complex and was like not having it. Like she was probably, I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't there, but she was probably getting the best of him. And he did some punk ass shit and shot her in the toe. Why did he run away? You're like quick. Why just run, run off? I don't know. So were they, are they dating each other? Uh, we don't know, but try to picture a five foot two dude and a, Five foot ten female that weighs a hundred pounds more than him. I just can't really picture that. It's a, it's a strange it just, it, piece, it, it, piece of imagery in my head here. It, it, you know, just, I just, I just can't. It's just I like, can't the, picture it's just this. like them little what the cartoons. Like, yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up, yo. We're going to go get. Yeah, boss. It's gonna be me and you all day, there, boss. You know, like the big bulldog and the little mouse. Yeah, boss. We're gonna take over the world, boss. Right? I told you to shut your mouth. Yeah, boss, we're gonna take, shut up, you little five two piece of shit. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, I can fight too. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, yo, I hope, I, I, I mean, that's really dangerous because he could have killed her. You know what I yeah. mean? Let's, let's be real. She, yeah. He could have killed her. Well, now, 
I mean, I don't know if they're dating each other, but I would think that might be the breakup. That might be the... <laughs> I think that might be, hey, I think we need some space. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, the gun thing, didn't know you were going to do that part. You know what I'm saying? I think it's... <laughs> Megan the Stallion just sounds tougher than Tory Lanez. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Tory Lanez. <laughs> it's like I thought it was two girls fighting. <laughs> Tory Lanez. Tori and, Tor and Megan just had a little. Tori tiff. and Megan had a fight. It was terrible. Oh my god, they were fighting. Oh my god, Tori, you're so bad. Tori, Tori and Megan the Stallion. Megan. <laughs> well, well, speaking of. Yes. Strange relationships. Yeah. There was Jada Pinkett and August Alsina that happened. August Alsina, right? Is it? I always forget. I don't know. It's Alsina. Okay. Yeah. August August Alsina. <laughs> yeah. That. Listen, man. <laughs> Here it is. Slightly transformed. A little bit from the norm. Bummer, bummer, bummer time. Bummer time. Where to sit back and run wide? Let us sit back and run wide. I didn't know the motherfucker was sick, and now she trying to get some dick. That was weird, and I'm gonna beat the bitch's ass. And, <laughs> <laughs> and she was talking about entanglement, and now I'm talking about a stranglement. I wanted to choke the bitch, <laughs> but I was sitting back. But that's okay, cause I'm know I'm looking whack. She said, "The fuck are you beeping at? It's like in the summer Afro aphrodisiac." The motherfucker played he was sick and then he got, and all of a sudden he pulled out his dick. Whoa, I couldn't believe she was fucking him. But that's okay, cause I'm trucking him. I'm knocking him out and I, I don't know, I was making up some shit. But yo, <laughs> bummer, bummer, bummer time. Bummer time. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Who doesn't love Will Smith, man? You know what I mean? I love Will Smith. I've met Will Smith. Dope dude. Period. Like, always been cool as fuck. When he when he was making big movies, always cool. Um, and Jada Pinkett, always loved Jada Pinkett. Shit, I was, and Jada was, you know, one of the finest motherfuckers in the 90s. Like, what? From different world to, she's still bad, still fine. Uh, but remember this, though. She did this when they were separated. Right? And this guy said... I'm, he was really sick, so he needed some pussy? I, I don't get it. He's like, uh, <laughs> how can I help you? Oh, I think you gotta, you gotta fuck me. I think that might be the that might be the solution. I might need to get some pussy and then, uh, I, I don't know. I, I've tried all the medication we can. Cause you remember they were like, you know, he was really sick. Yeah, sick enough to fuck you though? <laughs> you know, she was like, I feel good that I brought him back to health. Yeah. Jada, if I got that ass, I would be back to health too. I'd be like, zippity doo da, zippity a. All of a sudden, I feel much better. Shit, Jada knows she can get it. That's real talk. Her moms can get it. And no disrespect to the moms, but I ain't up, man. Shoot. I'm a, if I ever meet the mom, I'm gonna be like, <coughs> how are you feeling? Ah, I'm a little sick. I might need some therapy. <laughs> But my thing is, Will has been Will Smith has been on this thing ever since he turned fifty, right? This is my, this is an assumption, a theory. Um, ever since he's been turned fifty, remember he did the skydiving. He did all this, all this like I'm a middle aged man, and I just want to just find my truth. I want to find, you know, I've done everything. Like as far as the materialistic shit, the movies, the this, the that. I just want to do something else. I want to find the real meaning to life. And he's been trying to stand, like trying to like face his fears, face his fears and his truths. And I think this is one of them because he didn't have to do that fucking red table shit. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do no. He, he no, didn't have to that do actually made him look bad. I mean, me and Boosie were talking about how bad he looked. He doing just that, looked because he his face was like because you know the, the the crying face. We were talking about like how the so the, yo the, so the, the what Will did you really Smith, do? What did you mean? The, the Will Smith crying face has replaced the Jordan crying meme. I, he literally had that face. I know Jordan's happy shit. Jordan's like, man, remember at Kobe's uh, funeral? Jordan started crying. He goes, damn, I'm going to be another meme again. <laughs> but I think that um, um, 
you know, um, the it, to Will Smith, you know what it's going to be like? They're going to compare. Remember that scene where Ben Vereen, his father, leaves him? He's going to be like, that's okay. No, that's cool. That's cool. You know what? You fucked him, right? I'm going to get me some new honeys. I'm going to get a whole new family. I'm going to get, I'm, you know what? That's all right. I'm going to get other bitches. Watch. To hell with him. Why don't she want me no more, man? To hell with August. <laughs> you remember that scene? Well, I mean, well, I, I Will Smith poll. really showed his acting yeah. chops. No, I feel you. I feel you. I, I remember I, I did a poll. I said, who does Will Smith have to sleep with in order to, to get everyone's respect back? And the choices were like August Alcina's baby mother, Jada Pinkett's mother. Yeah. Or August Alcina. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh, shit, I'm not going there, fuck, oh, oh, man, I'm good, I ain't going there, no, you're not, no, you're not, I am not going there, whoa, imagine that, imagine that twist of fate, you know something, this is my boyfriend now, August, ha, take that, Jada, <laughs> I'd be like, dumber, dumber, dumber time, dumber time, <laughs> No, no, hell no. No, that would be, <laughs> be fucked up. Because first well, of all, I always thought was that, the thought I had in my head about them was they were swingers. I used to hear that they were swingers. I heard well, they were swingers. I don't me, know what kind of swinging. Okay. But I heard the motherfuckers was on the, I heard the motherfuckers was on the swing like, wee, wee. <laughs> Let me tell you something, and I, yeah. I mentioned this in a couple of my interviews, and yeah. people are starting to are trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. But I heard from a very reliable source, yeah, that this right here that you're hearing, this entanglement thing, yeah, this ain't nothing, based on how Will and Jada have been getting down for years. Right. This right here, I've heard some detailed stories about those two that I cannot mention on camera, I'll tell you off camera, because I will get sued for defamation. You I can't of prove all it. people are not gonna well, say let, let me tell you though, because I get, listen, as Vlad TV, no. I get information that other people don't right, get. Right, people right. approach me right. and tell me stories and so forth. There's right. a lot of stuff that I get as a news outlet that I just have to just, okay, well, right. I'll keep gotcha. this in, in, in my gotcha. mental Rolodex, but right. I can't put it out. Right. I've, I've been hearing some stories about those two, and this right here ain't nothing. It's, this ain't nothing. This is G-rated compared to what that's I That's why I think they did it. That's why I think they were like, yeah, fuck it. Let's talk about this. I mean, I, I and I was like, I think they, I always thought they was open like that. I always thought they'd been, you know, and I just thought this was some entertainment shit personally. And you got to remember, they're both actors. So remember that. They're both, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I could be wrong. Yeah, I, could, I, I suppose, but I, Do you Will think Smith. she surprised him with like, wow, you was fucking him? I don't think she surprised well, them. Well, remember, remember, I think they surprised them, everyone with, hey, I'm going to do an interview about it and tell everyone that Will gave me permission to have sex with his wife. That's what I think surprised everyone because Will is looking like a cuckold right now. Let me tell you. Well, right. He was looking, He was. He, yeah, he's looking a little, I think that the plan. Right. It's one thing to be sleeping with someone's wife when you're separated, when they're separated. Yeah. But it's another thing to go, hey, I'm going to have sex with your wife. Go for it. Let me let me share some positions that are, that she really likes. Here, let me get jiggy with it. Nah, 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 get it jiggy with it. Nah, nah. Listen, my thing is, I think the plan backfired. Well, I mean, let's think about it. Rick Ross in that August, they made a new song called Entanglement. Entanglements. They made a song. Talking about entanglement. Huh? Talking, talking about entanglement. And I called it. Let me tell you, a week before he dropped that song. I was on Twitter, and I'll, I'll show the tweet, and you can see the date. Yeah. It said, I said, I said, right now, August needs to go to the studio and make a song called Entanglements. And sure enough, a week later. He made it Entanglements. Tangle. It's called Entanglement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wrote a song about it. You want to hear it? Here it yeah, goes. you want to hear it? Here it go. Wow. Wow. I think his plan backfired. And who knows? Because they said he was coming out with an album, too, like some music. So... Then he, that's when he spewed all that shit. He had that, he had that interview with um, um, Angie. Angela Yee. Angela Yee. Angela Yee, yeah. 
First of all, that uh, that 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 interview was boring as fuck. Holy crap! I could barely get through that shit. I'm like, dude, explain. Hurry up. I mean, it was just a boring ass interview. I got through half of it, but it was like I think he was trying to sell his album, and maybe it worked. Did he do well in sales? Anybody know? Or in the single? Uh, I only know about the song Entanglement. Entanglement. And that's it. That's the only song I know about. I think he's going to do an Entanglement. Hits, you know, on he's going to be a street mix. Like he's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be a street mix. Uh, different mixes of Entanglement. He going. He's going to squeeze the fuck out of that. Because Jada gave him the the you know think about it Jada is hooking him up entanglement because because Jada was literally so poised Jada looked like she was running that meeting man Jada looked like she was running that meeting you gotta understand she's from the Tupac she's that that's that Tupac rubbing off on her you know what I mean she goes keep your head up she was telling her, keep your head up come on now nothing but a gangster party come on man you can't believe it you gotta achieve it you know I was in entanglement uh. I had to do my thing, get some dick, but that's what it, cause I'm a trick. Oh uh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm talking shit. Jay, I respect Jada Pinkett and, and Will Smith, <laughs> but I'm saying, I'm saying she's from, she's Pockish, man. She's from that shit. Think about Tupac. Compare Tupac and and Will Smith, uh, as far as mm. like, I'm just saying, I'm yo and Will Smith. Listen, Will Smith's a very smart. I think he got accepted to like MIT. The dude's like fucking brilliant, dude. Smart dude, well well raised. Not saying Jada Pinkett isn't, but she hung around Tupac. Wasn't Jada a little hood? Jada's kind of yeah. hood because she came off in different world as a hood chick, smart, but she was fine as fuck. But J Will Smith, father, mother, West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where he spent most of his days. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I mean, Will Smith looks like such a well raised kid. So compared to that gangster shit, because literally Jada did this thing like, yeah, you know, I told you. I was an entanglement, man. What's good? I told your ass, man. Come on now. Fuck out of here with that bullshit. He goes, yeah, but hold up, though. You didn't explain it, though. What do you mean? Come on now. We got entangled. Uh. Did a little <laughs> thing thing. Go about your business. She was literally mafioso. She goes, what are you doing? You gonna come on here and embarrass me in front of my table right here? I told you. We did what he did. Bada bing, bada boom. It's what I did. I said I was in an entanglement, all right? You know what entanglement? Look in the fucking dictionary. It means you're you're sort of entangled. You do things. You do a couple <laughs> things. I can't really explain it right here. You're not gonna embarrass me right now, okay? So, yo, stop. Act like a fucking man, all right? I, I get it. You're fucking Will Smith. You got the jiggy. You got this. You got that. It's my turn now, all right? It's been a long time till I felt, I, I haven't felt good for a long time. You didn't do you shit made me for me. You feel good. I made you feel like I, I, I did everything for you. I did everything and this is what you do to me. Now you don't want me to get some dick? Get the fuck out of here. You know what she should have had? She should have had a little, you know what would be great if she was at the table and she was eating? Jada was eating? You know how they eat the mafioso? What do you want? Um, I came to uh, ask you what's up with you in August. What do you think is up with me in August? All right, we were separated. Hmm? Pass the sauce. Pass the sauce. What do you want? No, but you said that you he was really sick. Yeah, I knew he was sick. All right, and then he got better. Well, how did he get better though? He got better. I gave him some ass. That's what I did. I gave him some poo poo or whatever you guys call it. What do you want? You know, I did what I did. Huh? You're going to come here to my fucking table, to my red table, and you're going to come here and embarrass me. Huh? Is that what it is? You know what the fuck happened. You do your thing, I do my thing. That was the fucking deal. You understand me? Get the fuck out of here, huh? What, am I a clown? Or am I here to amuse you, huh? <laughs> you don't, you're, you're, is it the way I talk, huh? Is that what it is? Get the fuck out of here, you piece of shit. Okay, there we go. Joe Joe Pesci doing Jada Pink. Joe Pesci. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was a fucking entanglement. Can you believe this shit? Fucking entanglement. She she fucking got other dick. That's what the fuck I did. I fucked somebody else. You motherfucker, you fresh prince motherfucker, you. Huh? You fucking fresh prince fucking $800 million fuck you. And I'm not supposed to get mine? Get out of here. Hey, pass the sauce, huh?
I'm done with this guy. Mike Tyson, who had been talking about fighting yeah. various people. Yeah. First it was Holyfield, yes. then you heard Riddick Bowe and yeah. so forth, has now settled on Roy Jones Jr., which which surprised the hell out of me because Roy is a smaller guy. Yeah. I guess, I mean, he was more of a middleweight boxer. Sure. I guess he did light yeah. heavyweight light at heavy one point in his right. career, but he's not Tyson big. He's not Tyson big. Um, I, 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 I think it's going to be an exhibition, right? It's going to be like eight rounds. Eight rounds. Exhibition. Um, I thought it was going to be him and Evander Holyfield. Um, that, yeah. that's, that would have been an even bigger ticket because of what they've been through before with the biting of the ear. Um, and watching Tyson, who shit, that motherfucker looked good as fuck. Yep. And he was like, I'm back. <laughs> I was like, see, because I, I and even, even in an interview, it's like, I have a lot of rage in me. I, I just feel like the, 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 the lion inside me and I got to let it out some kind of way. I, I just feel like, I still feel like I'm a killer. I'm a fucking killer. And when I was watching him hit those bags, I, the, the pads, I said, oh shit. But most boxers don't lose that. You, it's like riding a bike. That whole the way they, the, the, the you know, when he does that, the, all that shit. Tyson, they don't lose that. That's part of their DNA. And Tyson hitting the bag, and he's in shape too. Do you see how? Oh man, what is he like? Two hundred, maybe two hundred, tight two hundred. Oh yeah, no, he's he, rich. Bal he ballooned up to about two thirty, two forty. I think he ballooned up to like two forty, two fifty. No, Tyson looks fantastic. I'm so happy for him. I am a Mike Tyson fan. I think we all are. I mean, unfortunately, with the way stuff went with, 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 went with his career after Customato passed away and Don King fucked him. Either way, Tyson has some great um, highlights. He's one of the greatest heavyweight boxers ever witnessed. I mean, this dude was a slugger. The black shorts, the black shoes with no socks. I, I'm a Tyson fan. I've met Tyson on several occasions. Nicest guy in the world, man. Nicest guy in the world. And you know, the, the system fucked him. You know, girls lying on him that he raped him and shit. I don't believe he raped that chick because he told the truth. He said, I've done some fucked up shit to women. He goes, oh yeah, I've done fucked up shit, but I didn't rape her ass and I believe the whole thing. You guys should see that, I think it's 2007 Tyson documentary. It was called Tyson and um, Carmelo Anthony and, 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 and a guy by Tayback, James Tayback. They produced it and it was awesome. And I am actually kind of excited to see Mike Tyson back in the ring. And I, and Roy Jones, I'm a Roy Jones fan too. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm more of a Tyson fan. And I think it'll be interesting because they're both older. So that, I think maybe the, that, it, the difference will be, I think Tyson might be older than Roy Jones maybe. Well, uh, Mike Tyson is 54, Roy Jones is 51. Okay. Close. As far as age, that's a good matchup. I don't know yeah. how much Roy Jones weighs now. I'm sure he's getting in shape. But how how um, much does Roy Jones weigh? I, Tyson got to be like maybe 2, 205. Between 200. Mike Roy Tyson's 240 Jones right now? currently, according to the internet, Roy Jones weigh, weighs 193 pounds. And, and Mike Tyson weighs 200 and what? 240? Oof. Mike Tyson weighs, again, according to the internet, 240 pounds. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh. yeah. That's so you're talking like about 47 50... pound difference. That when, is a... Yeah, Tyson... That, that, that's like, that's like Megan Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez difference Yeah, that's right Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. Like the, <laughs> I feel like it's a Megan Thee Stallion sort of like a Tory Lanez kind of fight. I think, it, but this time it's going to be different. I'm going to knock him the fuck out. <laughs> I don't know. And he's not, and he's not going to have a gun. <laughs> right, right, right. He's not going to shoot me in the foot. Impossible. I, I think that... Um, Mike Tyson might knock him the fuck out. With all oh, yeah. that, if, at the, it depends. Depends on how Roy Jones trains, because 190, what would that be? In that light heavyweight? Let's look at that, because yeah. there's, you know, you got bantamweight, how does it go? Bantamweight, flyweight, featherweight. You got um, lightweight, you got welterweight, which a lot of people don't even know what the fuck welterweight is. Welterweight, you got light heavyweight, you got middleweight, you got light heavyweight, Heavyweight, you got super heavyweight. Isn't there super heavyweight? You got a lot of weights. Go all the way down. Right. Uh, light light heavyweight is above 165 pounds and up to 178 pounds. So that's oh, he's heavyweight then, 190. That that 
Yeah, so he's technically above that, making him heavyweight. He's and 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 so Tyson would be like a super heavyweight because mm -hmm. they're super heavyweight. So he's in. He's qualified. So Roy Jones, but Roy Jones might lose weight training depending on his yeah. on his the way he trains. If he does a, a weight training, if he gets muscle put on, because muscle weighs more than fat. You know what I mean? It depends, but I think it's gonna be very interesting. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a huge one right there. That's oh, gonna yeah. be huge. I, I want oh, Mike yeah. Tyson to fight everybody. I want Pacquiao. I want uh, I want Mayweather. I want everybody. I'm back. I don't give a fuck what the weight is. I Conor don't care McGregor. what the weight is. I don't care what the weight is. I really don't care what the weight is. I just want to knock everyone out. I want after that. I'm going to the Trump. I want Trump. I want to knock out Mitch McConnell. I'm gonna knock out Mike Pence. I'm knocking out everybody. I don't give a Hulk Hogan. Trump's going to be like, who cares? I can take him on. I'm much heavier than him. Longer reach. He's not a real heavyweight. He's fake. He's fake. He can't be. He's nice impossible. I can take Mike Tyson. He's old. I'll fuck him up. I know I will. I'm pretty good. Got a quick jab. I'm very fast. Very tiny mouth. He won't be able to hit it. I'm great. Well, uh, we just had Boosie on the show again. Boosie is fantastic. Period. Isn't he, though? God yeah. damn it. That whole thing he did about Louisiana and how they talk to women. Oh, that was fan. That was <laughs> fucking great. What's your name, baby? That's how we do. He grabbed the girl. Oh, that was fucking great. Oh, we'll, we'll play that clip. Don't cut his dick off, man. Don't cut his dick off, man. You want, Come on, you want a little, yeah, you want, you want a little yeah, yeah. You want a little yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jada Pinkett, she was, she was Zoomed. Louisiana, we Zoom bitches. It's like, it's, it's an attraction. You heard me? It's an attraction. <laughs> you know, our accent. See, she got caught up. All of that to, hey, baby, come here. <laughs> you so motherfucking beautiful. He grabbed, he bought, he bought to bring your fucking ass here. You beautiful motherfucker. And grabbed and kissed her. And fucked up. You my little, yeah, yeah. Bitch, you my little, yeah. She bought, I ain't never had a nigga call her. Bitch, you my little, yeah. <laughs> I'm loving you, ho. You know, she bought, I ain't never, she bought, got zoomed. Zoom. You know, we some attractive niggas. We got a good accent. You know what I'm saying? And you know, that's how it happened, man. She, I think she got Zoom. Yo, that's that Louisiana shit. I, be, I met a Louisiana chick. She was like, go, oh, what, what, who that, who that baby? Who that baby on the hill, on the hill, baby? I was like, what? I, I'm pretty good at slang, but I didn't know what the fuck she was like. She was giving that cage on mojo shit. Hit on, hit on, hit on, hit on, baby. Oh, huh? Who that, who that, who that? Well, during our uh, during our interview, and this yeah. is have been, has been going viral recently. Yeah, uh, I think even Fifty Cent posted it. Wow! And uh, Boosie said that he will put R. Kelly in a versus battle over anybody, including Michael Jackson, Prince, Stevie Wonder, and Beyonce. And by the way, nobody can go in a versus battle with R. Kelly in the world, <laughs> living or dead. Now, lucky he in trouble, motherfucker. Who, who, wait, hold, hold on. That's a good. Nobody. Question. Who you gonna call? Michael Jackson? No. Beyonce? Beyonce? No. Nobody got more hits than R. Kelly. Nobody. I'll wait. Stevie Wonder's still alive. He can't fuck with no R. Kelly. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder can't fuck with no Stevie R. Kelly. Stevie Wonder. Let's keep it real, man. Nobody can fuck with R. Kelly when it come to hits. Nobody can battle him. Nobody. I don't give a damn what he did, who he fucked. I know he fucked up, but when it come to talent, we cannot take this away from R. Kelly. I don't know about Michael Jackson, but um, I don't know about Prince either. I don't know about that one. Um, but yeah, he, R. Kelly, because we were talking about that last night. I said, R. Kelly, he maybe can do verses from his jail cell, maybe with the wardens around and shit. <laughs> R. Kelly got a lot of fucking hits, man. And he's written a lot for other people. We talked about this, remember? R. Kelly, he's probably right. R. Kelly, yeah, he will smoke. You have to remember, too, this is early 90s. You're talking about R. Kelly and public announcement. You got mm -hmm. that. You got you got R. Kelly. You got a lot. Yeah, R. Kelly. How many albums does R. Kelly have? Whew. 150 albums. That's how many wait, albums he wait, has. Wait, wait. He has 100, 100, 150 albums. He has no, a, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Man, what the fuck? He has a lot of stuff. I'm joking. Oh, he wins. I, I, I <laughs> He'll smoke Michael Jackson. God damn. Shimon. Are you serious? 
shit, Shimon. <laughs> Michael R. Kelly has hold on, how many albums? Does Twelve, R. Kelly ten. Have? Uh, yeah. and his collaborations. One, two, hold on. Yeah, he one, right. two, three, four, five, six, seven, Jesus eight, Christ. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oh, yeah. thirteen, oh. fourteen. Fourteen albums. Yeah, he probably. Oh, wait, fourteen everybody. albums. Wait, hold on, hold on. Fourteen albums plus three collabs. So that's technically seventeen albums. Oh yeah, he wins. Yeah, you're right. No, Boozy's right. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 and there are a lot, and a lot of his songs are hits. Like almost yeah. all, you don't even have to turn. You could just leave it playing. Yeah, he's right. R. Kelly would probably fuck everybody up. Does R. Kelly know about the verses? No, I'm just. Well, I don't know. I don't know. He's been in prison the whole time. That I would. Been, it, uh, I think that on. Swiss Beats should get some, like maybe some, get make it happen. That motherfucker makes everything happen. Swiss Beats makes everything happen. The R. Kelly, if they let him do that shit, that would be the biggest versus. And and you know the DMX Snoop Dogg versus was dope. I didn't see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I was in and out, but that shit was dope. The R. Kelly against the world? Shit. <laughs> R. Kelly against the world. Stevie Wonder still live. You just have them all like against R. Kelly. He'll be like, I don't mean to um uh, I mean Stevie, I, I I respect you a lot, but you got my Sharia Moore in a couple joints. I'm about to fuck you up <laughs> with this chocolate factory <laughs> album. Stevie be like this, you're right, you win. I have to leave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out. <laughs> I'll take on everybody. I'll take on Isley, I'll fuck you up too. You was in my shit. <laughs> well, since last time, yeah. Kanye has, I don't know, I don't know if he's officially running for president or kind of, sort of running for president or what. But he had his first rally in South Carolina yeah. where he famously announced that Harry Tubman did not free any slaves. She simply sent them to the North to go work for some other white people. Okay. Okay, Kanye. I love Kanye, man. It's like I sit, every time he talks, sometimes I go like that. I just look down and go, I don't know if he's crying out for help. I don't know if he's faking it. I don't know if he's using it to get attention because it does work. That dude, he's a hell of a salesman. That motherfucker does not, his sales do not drop ever, first off. And there's something about when you make a lot of money, you can like get away with a lot of crazy shit. You just can't. If Kanye did his church service in a diaper, everybody would come in a diaper. Because you know, think about the people that, the stuff that he says and he does his church service. And the people that come to the church service are kind of, and, and guys, I'm not trying to insult you, but you're kind of dick riders. You're like holy dick riders. Sorry to say this, but there's some stuff he says. You go, okay, Kanye, that was wrong. And the only lesson that he will learn, I think, when he says things out of pocket is like, okay, we're not going to go to your service today because we're kind of pissed off. We would like you to apologize. Well, you think if, if 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 people kept if I said crazy shit and people kept coming to my shit, I ain't gonna apologize for shit. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying, if I'm gonna yeah. say you know Harriet Tubman was a man, you know she had a dick, right? Now if I said some crazy shit like that, which I'm not saying for real, guys, remember, I'm just giving an example. I, you know because I would never disrespect Harriet Tubman like that, and then people still showed up in my shit, I wouldn't apologize. But it's something about the wealth, the rich and famous. When you're celebrity, people don't give a fuck. They they give you a pass for a lot of shit. Kanye West, if he, I I I hope he doesn't say anything careless like that anymore. The next minute he'll say, I think black people should be exterminated. No, hold on. <laughs> Will black people be like, go on, speak, Kanye, speak? You right? I mean, come on. There's we gotta hold people accountable to a certain point, man. We got to hold people accountable. I don't care if it's me, you. We all got to be held accountable. Like, yo, dog, that was fucking out of pocket, yo. You know what I mean? That was out of pocket. People need to hold his ass accountable and say you can't. First of all, Harriet Tubman freeing the slaves. Let's not fucking minimize that shit. Let's, oh, 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 yeah, she just freed the slaves. Like, it was some easy shit to do, my friend. Do you even know how hard it is to, to, to escape prison now? Like, like, just to escape anywhere now. There are people who are kidnapped right now trying to leave. Imagine trying to escape and with no tools, you understand? With everything against you, pretty much. So 
we call her Moses, Grandma Moses. First of all, don't ever, 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 you should never, ever dog the people that came before us. Because if it weren't for Harriet Tubman's, if it weren't for the Malcolm X's and the Martin Luther King's and the Sojourner Truth's and the Medgar Evers and the, the Barbara Jordan's and the Shirley Chisholm's, and the, your ass wouldn't be rapping, okay? You would not be up here on a microphone rapping. I wouldn't be doing comedy. I wouldn't be doing comedy the way I want to do it. I wouldn't be having this free speech, even though racism is still here, hasn't gone anywhere, still, I'm able to navigate because of the people and what they've done before us, Marcus, the Honorable Marcus Garvey and all of these cats. I'm sorry, man. I really believe in ancestral spiritual energy. I believe in that. I really do. And I just hate it when we sit there and say this shit about these cats so easily and the hell that they went through. And you're making, you're, and I, I'm glad that he's one of the, wealthy, the wealthiest rappers. I'm happy for the guy. I know Kanye. I'm not his best friend, but I know Kanye. I know him through my other partners because we're all from Chicago and I knew him early in the days. But, but I, 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 the, reason, I, the reason why you have this money is because of what these people have contributed to. Whether you knew them or not, peripherally, they helped us out. The, 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 the labor and the sweat and the, the martyring and the losing of life, is be, the reason why we're here is because of them. And we need to cut that insulting of our, of our, of our ancestry, enough insulting that shit, that shit. And the Honorable John Lewis, may he rest in peace, John Lewis. Shout out to John Lewis who passed away. You know, I hope they name that bridge after him. You know, you are, you are shitting on the work of these people. I'm not saying they were all perfect either. But regardless, you weren't out there. There's footage on them out there sacrificing themselves. And then for you to say that to me is wrong. But then there's some other stuff in that speech that Kanye said that they do not show, which, I'm, which is whack. Because they talk about, Kanye was talking about agriculture. Kanye was talking about us having our own land. They never showed that part. They only showed the Harriet Tubman shit, which is fucked up. Because they should have showed the balance of that speech. Because Kanye actually was saying some positive shit. We need to have our own land. We need our agriculture. We need to grow our own food. We need to do this. Do he actually said that. I saw the other part. And they didn't, they didn't advertise that. Well, I'm advertising it on this. You need to see that other part that Kanye said. But I thought, nobody's perfect. Even on, 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 on these interviews. I'm not perfect. I say shit. People get pissed off. Nobody talks perfectly when you're a speaker. Kanye's a speaker. I'm a speaker. You're a speaker. Nobody's going to be perfect. But we can learn from criticism. We can learn from that. Some people just criticize because they just don't like you and they criticize and they're not even giving you constructive criticism. But we can all learn. So I think that Kanye was wrong for saying that thing about Harriet Tubman. But he was right about a lot of other shit. But him running for president, I do not know. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I don't know. I just want him to be a wonderful hip hop artist. I want him to get some help. That's what I want for him. I because the problem with mental mental um, mental sickness in the in in the African American community is not addressed enough. It needs to be addressed because we have trauma. Post traumatic slave disorder is what we have. We have that. Africans have that. Latinos, Afro-Latinos, whether they like it or not, you know, I'm going to say this again. The, one, the, the ones that keep claiming they're not black, not black, not black, not negro. You need it too. We need it. The Latin community needs it. We need mental help on just, just therapy groups. We need that. Because you think about it, the stresses of racism, police brutality, intra-racial fighting. We need that. Black women need it. There's a lot of trauma with black women from black men who get it from society. We need a lot of mental help. And that I think Kanye is an example of that because he's out there. He's wealthy and all this other shit, but the issues are not solved. And they, people think that money solves that shit and it does not. You have the money to get the help, which I hope he does. This is why I'm, this is just my, I'm just, this is theorizing. He might be acting. If he's acting, cool, fine. But I just, it looks like he's crying out for some help. I'm not sitting here to dog him at all because he's a very important piece in our puzzle. 
And he's a very brilliant dude and he can do a lot of dope shit. You know what I mean? I, I know he can because he's that clever. So that's yeah, my thing. He can take. do a lot of dope shit, but being president is, is hopefully not one of the Listen, dope things. Listen, the presidential that he does shit. Because having Kanye with a, with a nuclear access is a very dangerous thing. And I remember Chance the Rapper started to support Kanye publicly yeah. for president. Chicago, man. And that was, Chicago. Yeah. And that was going well and good until uh, yeah. your boy Terry Crews decided to co-sign him. Terry Crews, <laughs> man. And, and listen, my man Terry, yeah. listen. <laughs> I talk about Terry. I did an invitation to Terry Crews. Terry is my friend. I've known Terry a long time. And Terry responds to me on Twitter. I respond to him. I disagree. Did I talk about this last time? Uh, well, I remember, yeah, I think you did, because you actually disagreed with this whole black supremacy I did, nonsense. I did, and, and it's okay to disagree. I don't hate the guy, but it's okay to disagree with each other, man. That's how we learn. Just because you black don't mean I disagree, I agree with you. You know what I mean? We can. All, it's okay to agree to disagree. It, has to be, it doesn't have to be like, I'm going to fuck you up. That's, that's crazy. You know what I mean? And Terry Crews, what did he goes, I support Kanye. Listen, we have to understand that this, listen... Kanye has a good idea. Listen, I support Kanye. You know why? Okay, let's say I'm a bird, right? I'm a bird and you're a bird. You fly differently than I do. Why do you have to fly at a different altitude than I do? That will cause a problem for other birds. Okay, that was a bad example. Now, let's say I'm a frog and you're a frog. Okay, we're two frogs in the same water, right? Let's say I jump on your pad and my pad sinks. Now we're causing frog tension. That's not right. We should be able to sit on, okay, that's a bad example. Let's try this one. Let's say I'm a donut and you're a donut. You're a chocolate donut, I'm a white donut. Why can't we be in the same box? See, we have to understand that this kind of thing is gonna cause a problem. Black people need to be careful because it's happened to me. I, okay, that's a bad example. <laughs> Terry, like Terry, listen. If, I, if Terry says something that I disagree with, I'm going to let him know. I'm going to say, I don't agree. If Terry says something I agree with, I'm going to say, I agree with you on that. But there's, it shouldn't be a problem with disagreeing because that is how we work through our shit, our, our uh, black shit, is that we can't agree with everybody. We have to be able to sit there and talk without going, fuck you, motherfucker, I'm going to beat you. Uh-uh, it shouldn't be that way. That's what I'm saying, you know what I mean? But, you know, Terry supporting Kanye... Listen, I don't, I don't know Kanye running for president. Is it that easy now? I mean, Trump made it. Trump opened the gates for just anybody yeah. that's not qualified. That's 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 America's fault, because it's America's fault for letting that happen. Now everybody's running for. It. Didn't The Rock say he was going to run? Uh, he talked about running, but he hasn't officially. He's I'm, probably if The Rock does run, it's probably going to be during the next election because no one really wants to run against an incumbent president because they usually win a second term. President Rock? Is that gonna be president? <laughs> do you do you do you smell what the president's cooking? <laughs> well, well, speaking of presidents, yes. Joe Biden, who I generally like, yeah. said that Trump is the first racist to be elected US president. Oh, oh please stop. Joe Biden. Okay, so Biden. so we you're, actually you're, did you're, you're we, we did some research. Wait, wait, wait. You did research uh, all of them are racist. Right. Well, well but let's, let's just, let's just put them. a few prominent ones. Okay, when George Washington, who had slaves. I don't know. Is that racism? Jo George Washington had 300 slaves. Okay. Thomas Thomas Jefferson, who fucked said... A, he was that, fucking a 14-year-old black girl, Sally Hemings, fucking a 14-year-old black girl, and had slaves. Racism. Okay, next. Right. Right, yeah, because actually Thomas Jefferson called slavery an assemblage of horrors, but actually owned 175 slaves at the time. He had assemblage of horrors. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's like the, 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 the whites in South Africa going, this is horrible, but you fucking gentrified half of South Africa. Once you get your, yeah. once you get your, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like the, um, during this time, the um, people who have been voice charactering the black characters on The Simpsons, they decided to step down. Wait, they decided to step down. The guy who does Cleveland, right? And all the other black characters, they were all white people doing them. So they've stepped down. 
Oh, you mean after 20 years of making hundreds of millions of dollars? Yeah, thank you. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm never going to do a black character again. I am guilty. You should have been guilty the first year you were fucking doing it. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, stop it with the bullshit. There, I think that all the presidents pretty much were racist. I think, I mean, um, Roosevelt was pretty cool. Not Teddy, but Fred, um, um, was it Franklin was pretty good. His wife was the shit. Elnor, Elnor, um, Eleanor Roosevelt was the shit because she flew with the Tuskegee Airmen. She fought for racism. That's real shit. His wife was dope. But I don't know if I can trust because the way that the White House is set up and slaves built it, I mean, it's called the White House, motherfucker. You think that right. and, Reagan and was racist as fuck? Let me just let Go me ahead. just point out yeah. that the White House was actually built by black slaves. You damn right that shit. There's a book on it. Blacks, you think the white boys built that shit? Paul Mooney even says it. Black people built built the goddamn White House. Black people built the White House. Black motherfuckers built the White House. They built the White House and then they said, name it the goddamn White House. <laughs> it's not gonna be the Black House, it's the truth. Black people built the White House. They built damn near everything. And Woodrow Wilson was a Klan member. Remember the Skull and Bones, that whole thing. They were, he was a Klan member. Wait, 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 wait. So Skull and Bones, the Klan thing? I thought That's, that was well, more they just like a... Skull. I thought Skull and Bones was more like a college. Well, I thought Skull and Bones, thing. where they had a picture of them in their Klan uniforms, and then they had the Skull and Bones uh, picture. Look that shit up. I don't know. I mean, that's what I heard. I heard they weren't uh, like the. I heard it I wasn't the coolest crew of people. And this shit started. Wait, what year did the Skull and Bones start? I'll tell you what if know. it's racist or not. Give me a year. Give me a year. Uh, Last year? Yup. The year before that? Yup. Year before that, Skull yep. and Bones started in 1832. Oh, in, in, no in racism Yale. there. Yale, Yale University. Yeah, that was Yale. racism on steroids in the 1800s. Nigga, have you seen pictures of black people in the 1800s? Wait, let me show you the pictures. <laughs> no smiles at all. The babies be mad. <laughs> Look at old 1800 pictures of black people. Yeah, now I feel you. I feel you. You're right. You're right. The Not depression a smiling oh, ever. So the 1800s. So you know that the racism was going on, and you know they probably had a code. No blacks. Fuck them. That please. You know why it's important to know about that history. That's why I tell people learn your history. And they're, now they're talking about teaching black history in schools now. Have you seen this? How are we going to teach it? Yeah, you just tell it. <laughs> what do you mean, how? You, you, you don't do what you've been doing, like lie, motherfucker. You just go, let's open up the book to black history. Page one, white people are mean. <laughs> Fuck, let's start with that. <laughs> and listen, I'm joking. So if anybody white is watching this and you're getting offended, you can take these and shove it up your ass. Because you know what I'm joking and you know what the fuck I mean. Black history is pretty much, which is a shame, black history, real African-American history, is pretty much about white oppression. I'm sorry, but it's pretty much about making things happen during white oppression, during slavery, during Reconstruction, during Jim Crow, during, you know, the crack uh, um, epidemic, all that shit. All the stuff that's been purposely done to African Americans. Your name being taken from you, the, you know, the separation of family, murdering of black women, right? Right? Slaughtering of black women, performing gynecological procedures on black women with no anesthesia. Hi, they have a statue in New York of the fucking guy. He's the father of gynecology. They need to take that shit down. Okay? So. So how are we going to teach it? That's what they literally said. How, no, just tell it. Just tell it. Anyway, but um, what was I saying? You know me. What was I saying? <laughs> well, let, let's, uh, let, let's switch uh, gears a little bit here. Yes. What was I saying before that, in my point? Oh, the, pre so the presidential, um, the White House has been racist, and sorry to say this, all the way through. And Obama 
love Obama, but Obama's related to Cheney and related to Bush. They are related. They're like eighth cousins that related to Cheney, Bush. He's related to all the motherfuckers. So I don't know. I think Obama looks like a nice guy, but I think he was caught in the system and had to do what he had to do. So Obama's related to them up. He's related to Brad Pitt, like a eighth cousin. Brad Pitt, he's related to Bush. He's related to Cheney. He's re Sorry, but a lot of times these presidents are all bloodline. It's all bloodline relation, you know? So racism has always been through the White House. He's not, Trump is probably the least, ra least racist out of the racist compared to all of the different administrations that came before us. Please, please, fuck out of here. Trump is not the first, Joe Biden, I disagree with you on that one. And Biden was part of the fucking, signing the bill to fucking incarcerate motherfucker. Shut up, Joe. Shut up, Joe. I mean, Joe is our only choice. <laughs> but Joe, stop. I'm sorry. I Listen, old white guys, hey, man, I'm sure there's some nice ones out there. But I, I'm not surprised if you guys are all you're pretty much racist. An old white guy that's 70, 80 years old, blah, blah, blah. Shit, white dudes that are 50. Man, white dudes that are 15 years old are racist. Give me a fucking break. I mean, there's, there's, there's white kids saying the word nigga every day and shit, dogging out other kids in their school. And I'm not saying it's everybody. I'm just saying there's a, there are people that do it. There, that's just for the Karens out there. Go ahead. Well, uh, Nick Cannon. Boy. Oh boy. Uh, he did an interview with Professor Griff. Yeah. I'm looking at your face, man. <laughs> and uh, the, the fallout of that interview was immense. Big time. Nick, Nick ended up Big time. losing while and out, yes, which he had he built up from scratch. He doesn't and own I remember, it? He doesn't own it? No, I think it was one of these partnerships that Viacom ultimately controlled. Damn. Even though, even though Nick, I remember in one of our interviews, he told me how when he first came up with the idea, no one was really interested. He spent like $50,000 creating his own pilot so, for that right. show. He, and then, he, so he should then have some brought partnership to Viacom, in that shit, though. Well, you know, you would think that, but ultimately what the deal that he signed is what he signed. And he wouldn't be complaining about losing Wild and Out if he still owned Wild yeah, and Out, right? True. Very so, true. Shit, that's uh, Viacom, Viacom severed uh, their relationship with Nick. Um he did keep his show uh, you know, The Mass Singer, which the, he's a producer on. The Mass Singer. Kept that. And then he did an interview with a, the rabbi. a rabbi. Abraham, who was the head of the, Abraham, what's his name? Abraham yeah. something. Well, I, I, uh, I don't remember his name, but he's the head of the Anti-Defamation League. Okay. Right. Anti-Defamation League. And then, and then uh, Jay Electronica has now chimed in and, and called the rabbi a, a devil and a liar and, and said that Nick Nick is, is wrong because black people are the true- Wait, wait, wait. You know, Okay, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He, Jay Electronics said Nick was wrong or that guy Abraham was wrong? He said the guy, the guy, the rabbi was wrong. Okay. And he's, a, he's a devil and a liar and a coward and, and Nick needs to stop listening to him and so forth. And, you know, because cause blacks, you know, American blacks are the true uh, children of Israel. Um, and, you know, it, the, the story goes on and on and, and Nick... You know, not only pissed off Jewish people, but pissed off black people by apologizing. He's donating to the Holocaust Museum, and that's causing a problem also, and so forth. Now, let me just say this: like, you know, I went on the Breakfast Club, and recently, uh, recently, I spoke, right? Recently, yeah. yeah, recently, yeah. And uh, I'm not really going to tell my opinions on how I feel what Nick said because me and Nick have a relationship that goes back some years now, both on and off camera. And him and I have not had a chance to speak. We played phone tag on the day it happened, and I have not heard from well, him since. Well, you will. You should. You will. I'll, I'll eventually. We'll eventually talk. We we have, but we actually know each other. We we yeah, actually. Yeah, we're fucking. How about this? We're grown men. You guys. We're grown talk. men. We're grown. We're not in high school. This is not fucking. Right. Let me hold the grudge. Fuck that. You all should talk at some point. We're, we, we should talk, and, yeah. and so I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really going to give my opinions about what, what what he said and so forth. Right. But I, I will. I will say this. This whole concept of a chosen people is is really some bozo shit for everyone involved, right? For the Jews, for 
you know, the black people who believe they really are the, the chosen people, who, for whoever else believes that they're a chosen person or believes even the concept of chosen people, it's really some bozo shit. It, okay. You think it's All arrogant? It does, you think it's arrogant? Number one, you're trying to say that God is favoring a group of people over others because of a bloodline of some sort. And if you really talk to any really religious person, they will all say that we are all God's children. Right? Do you really talk so just, to a lot of religious people? <laughs> I kind of stay away from the motherfuckers. I don't care who they are. <laughs> because right. here's the thing, you know, I grew up Episcopalian, Chicago. My parents are God-fearing. But my thing about, this is where... Okay, I'm going to make sure I do this right. <laughs> Shit. Because this is a sensitive issue, boy. And you know, there's black people, and they're, white, they're watching this. They're like, oh, what the fuck is this motherfucker going to say? Um, here's the problem. With the Bible, whatever scriptures, there has been a lot of tampering with this shit. A lot of tampering. Now, we're talking about shit that happened thousands of years ago, which we don't fucking know. We, nobody was there. I mean, uh, presently. We, we, everybody is talking about shit. You weren't over. You weren't there. There's no footage. We don't have footage on anything. All we can believe in is stuff we see on the walls and the this and digging up shit. A lot of these architecture groups... I think a lot of them do a lot of fuck shit where they like changing shit. Like I think sometimes some motherfucker might dig up some shit and go, oh shit, it's black. Yo, don't tell anybody. Change that shit. I really believe they do that shit. They be going into Egypt trying to change the color of the walls, not making it making them white. Because I'm saying biblically, biblically, can we talk geographically and scientifically? Fuck all the spiritual shit. Right, right. And, and I know where you're going with you this. You know where I'm going with this? I'm saying... The, the, the original Jews and Jesus and everyone else were all people of color. Point blank. Point, you're, you, it can't be. No, you say it this. Cannot you, be, it you cannot say be it. argued. I want you to say argued. that. Let it come out your yes. mouth. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it one more time. The original Jews, Jesus, and everyone else who was living in the Middle East. So let me tell you something. I have been to the Middle East. Go out there. I have been to Israel, Egypt, Jordan, Bahrain. All these places I have been to. Yeah, we. Egypt. All these places, it's all brown people. It's near the equator, okay? This is how it works. Now, did some of those people move to different parts of the world and, you know, have babies with people who didn't look like them? White people, Asian people, Spanish people, and then start to become, to look like those people a hundred generations later? Because we're talking about 2,000 years, right? That's a hundred generations. Yes. Am I technically, is my bloodline linked to the original Jews? I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't give a shit. Do I consider myself chosen? No. The whole concept is fucking stupid. Not only is it stupid for Jews to think that way, but it also creates animosity for people who feel they're not chosen because then there's animosity towards the people who think they're chosen. Then you get the arrogance of the people who think they're chosen. Yeah. And all it does is a big divisive clusterfuck yeah. that pisses everyone off and ain't based on nothing. It's all fucking mythology and fairy tales and everything else like that. Because let me tell you something. As much as someone believes in Jesus today, there was someone who believed in Thor just as strongly. <laughs> someone believed in Zeus Way stronger than the most ardent and and, you know, and the Hindu Muslim. gods with the eight arms. Everybody, right? Yes, right, yes. right. No, you, you you see, you're right. You're right. Listen, I think a lot of this stems from like when you see you know those Hebrew Israelites in New York, the dudes that be standing like this. Read. It says that in this one that the black man stuff right there. You see, the white man is the devil, and they and they have the little superhero shit on. And then there's always a little Jewish man going, you're wrong, you're wrong. No, that's not true. Listen, little white man, we ain't got time for the bullshit. And then if you walk past and you're black, say, brother, you need to listen to this scripture, man. Don't let these white people be like, no, nah, I'm just going to an audition. Fuck that audition, read. <laughs> it says right here that the black man needs to stop being, we are the chosen people, we are the 12 tribes of Judah. Now listen, this is coming from I think this is coming from being lied to for so long, right? Being lied to, 
making all the images white, even though you just said they're melanated people. These people were melanated. In the Bible, when I was reading it, I went to Catholic school for 12 years. Everybody was white, man. The King James version of this, they don't talk about the black royalty, the black kings and queens that were in Europe. They don't bring that up. They don't bring back how a lot of these people were black. They don't bring up none of that shit. Everybody was white. When I watched the Ten Commandments, right? Charlton Heston's a white dude that goes up into the mountains and shit. And he, and he said he talked to God. Cleopatra's white. Everybody's white. That's where that's coming from. It's that the images that they changed. Why is why is it that they did uh they did one uh, a movie recently on Egypt and everybody was white? Gerard Butler and I know Gerard. Gerard's from Scotland. And why is he in an Egyptian movie? I'm not saying that Europeans couldn't be in Egypt, but why are the main characters all white? Why is the Great Wall with Matt Damon, Genghis Khan? Why is he not Mongolian? Why is he white? What is this? With this fucking, this, this, this addiction or this, this thing about making all these people that aren't, wh aren't white, white. Why are you telling stories with white people in them that are not white? What the fuck is that? And that is where I think this comes from. The Hebrew Israelites. It's the lies and then, you know, and, and the way they come at it, you're so pissed off that you go, that's right, the white devils. We're not saying that there's every white person walking around just trying to fuck everything up. We're talking about these historians that have literally, purposely changed the history, left us out of it, and all we're stuck to is slavery and the NBA. There's a problem there. When, let's, how old, hey, do me this favor, man, because we're doing this fucking correctly. Look up how old African people are, and then look up how old Europeans are. Let's do that. Let's, this is Google. It's not, Google wasn't made by a black person, so no one can say shit to us. So. Uh, Africans are around 7 million years old. How old are Europeans? We're 7 million years old. All right. Happy birthday, African. I don't know when, what day it was on, but. <laughs> How old are Europeans? The genetic, the genetic lineage of Europe, of Europe mysteriously transformed about 4,500 years ago. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, hold on. You're 4,500 oh, years old, wait, how old, and we 7 uh, million. Well, African civilization was 3150 BC. I think this is a more complicated question. So, so the oldest civilization is from Southern Africa, the San people from Southern Africa. The San Africa. people that look Asian, yes. The San people, that's where everybody's traits from. You can see the documentary, The Journey of Man, where this white guy who's a geneticist proved that. The Journey of Man, it's on YouTube. They even have a book. This white dude went out, so you guys will believe it. Blonde haired white guy wanted to find out the origin of everyone, and they trace it back to the San people who are from South Africa, who have Asiatic faces. That is where Asian people have their faces from. The Asian look is African, it is not from China, it's from Africa. There are there are African tribes that have Asiatic faces. That's where the shit comes from. People come yeah. from Africa. Why are we surprised? There are albino Africans. Let's you know what I'm. That's all I'm saying. So right, I, I think I was actually wrong. I think the whole 4.5 million because I don't think humans were around millions of years ago. Well, well, we we're we're a couple hundred thousand years. We're oldest C people. A couple, a couple hundred. We're the thousand. oldest people. But I, I've everyone every scientist has been in agreement that Africans were the original humans. Even though they're mad, they still, they go, damn it. Every time they go to Africa, they dig up another bone. Fuck! Right. Fuck! And, and as those humans, and Bill Nye had this really great video kind of describing how vitamin D really uh, plays a role in what your skin pigmentation is. Melanocytes, sure, sure. Right, sure. exactly. And as you go, when you look at a map and you see people that are moving, that are located away from the equator, equator. they have lighter skin it's because of vitamin D and the way the sun interacts with it. Common sense. You know, but, you know, but this is this is science. You know, of course, the Nation of Islam has their own theory of but, it. Which, a, which, which is fine, but here's the thing. Their, their, their theory, let me just say this, you know, according, according to the NOI, right. there was a guy named Big Head Yakub, oh, right. who was an African, right. uh, who went to an island with a bunch of Africans and basically crossbred a bunch of them and created this white race and gotcha. killed off all the black ones gotcha. and created this evil devil right. type creature. 
and uh, he lived to 157 years old, and, and so forth. Now, if you want to believe this, there's no one stopping you from believing No one's that. stopping That's you cool. from believing like, That's listen, cool. I'm not a Nation of Islam guy. I've seen the minister live. I know cats from the Nation of Islam. I take what I want. As a black person experiencing racism, the religion part, I'm not part of that. I don't get into that. I was Episcopalian. I don't believe in that shit. You understand? I don't believe in that either. What I go with is science. I like the science aspect of everything. You understand? There are not just Nation of Islam Muslims. What about the Orthodox? What about the Sunni? What about, there's different sects of Muslims. There's different Jewish people. There's different, there's Hasids. You're not Hasid. Right. There's right. Hasid. Me, there's different let levels. Point, let, let, let me just, let me just point something out. To, so let me point something out to you, right? Right. When you look at, for example, black and Jewish tensions in New York. Yes. A lot of it, you could point to what happened in, in Crown Heights. Right. 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 Where, where uh, a Hasidic Jewish guy ended up hitting a black kid. Uh, a Hasidic Jewish ambulance showed up. Took the took the the Jewish guy and left the black kid to die, and then riots broke out. Right. But I want to explain something to you guys yeah. because I lived in Borough Park at one point, mm -hmm. which is a Hasidic Jewish neighborhood. Right. It was the only area that I could afford at the time. Right. When I was broke broke as shit, yeah. I lived around the Hasidic Jews. Right. If you were to put me instead of that black kid in that same situation, and a Hasidic driver hit me, and the same ambulance showed up. They would leave me in that road to die as well. Because you're not Hasidic? Because I'm not Hasidic. Right. Hasidic Jews don't like anyone outside of Hasidic well, Jews. Well, Hasidic Jews are a very strange group anyway, so I understand. It's a very that. strange group. Very let, me, let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell very you something. Extreme. This is, this is, this is some, some, some real shit. You know B&H uh, photo I love video? B &H. Like you, right. It's all Hasidic. B&H, which, which is run by Hasidic Jews, we found out, and it was, it was a lawsuit that we actually looked up, they were being sued by minorities who worked there because they were not treated in the same way as other Hasidic well, Jews. They weren't allowed to use there. the same bathrooms and everything oh, else I ain't like going that. Back there, then. So I made, I made a, you know, you could ask any one of my staff. We basically, you know, even though it's the closest and most stocked video store uh, in the area, in, in the area on Thirty Some Street, we, I, I told my entire staff that we were no longer shopping in. We're not age. shopping there. I, I just found this out. We're I not. We're not. We're not. They still doing it. that shit. It, 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 I don't know if they're still doing it, but they did it, and our thing is like, fuck them. We're not, we're not shopping in. Well, Munich. I'm not either. Even even though it's more more convenient, probably cheaper. We're not doing it because we're not supporting that type right, of thing. Right. Hasidic Jews are on their own shit, man. They have problems in Israel. No Israelis doubt. don't like Hasidic they Jews. They don't like them. It's it's they're a group of people that don't that they feel like they're the chosen ones. They don't fuck with anyone else. They speak they their own language. They have their own communities. Yeah. They have their own schools, yeah. their own it's hospitals, extreme. their own it's everything. Extreme. And they're like, fuck everyone else. We're the chosen people. We don't like other yeah. Jews or whatever if they're not us. Yeah. And a lot of times you have a problem with people. You could point to those people and say, look, 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 look what they're doing. But this is an extreme group. Very. Most Jews like me just want to live our lives, want to treat people equally, right. and, and, and just want to do good with the fucking world. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, so, yeah. So, so you're totally right about that. I know some dudes who are Hasids that kind of unhasid themselves when they come out, you know, with the payas and the... And um, like you said, there's different sects, but I want to understand this. When my friends that are Ethiopian Jews, Falashas, they're called, let's look it up, please. So I'm not Falashans. They're the, I think there might be the oldest Jewish people, right? Maybe. Let me know. And they're saying like from my tribe, I'm Igbo, Nigeria, that they're, they're saying that they're, the, there's Jews out of, uh, out of Nigeria too, the oldest tribe. My thing is this, Jewish is not a race. Jewish is not a race, but there's but they we've made it a race because we can uh, we we yeah. we we it kinda, it kinda we, is kinda is. When you, you know, be, when example, you like, be Ashkenazi, my, would you be considered Ashkenazi? I, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm an Ashkenazi Jew. And I, I'm an I'm an Ashkenazi Jew, and I know that my great 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 grandmother was was also a Jew. You know, and that's it was just kind of passed down. Was now, it that, that's not the religion? I, I don't know, man. Okay. I don't know. And no, I'm I just asking. Really I'm care. Told, listen, I'm just asking. Well, I, I can't. I can't me? tell you one thing though. I can tell you that in Russia, which is where we lived, Russia, right? Until we we had to, you know, because there was really a lot of racism in Russia sure. towards towards Jews. 
Jews and regular Russians like Putin, they look different. I don't look like the Putin Russians. No. To you, to you, it may all look the same, but when you get Russians around each other, they're like, Now you know how we feel in the police report. Go ahead. (laughs) Right. I have, my hair is more like kind of fuzzy, you know, when it grows out. Uh, my features, my nose looks different, my my features look different, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Like, there's a very strong What part of Russia would you be considered compared to a I, Putin? I was, I was from the Ukraine. You're the Ukraine where Russia took over that. Yeah, at the time that I was born there, it was part of the USSR. So, Oh, okay, the Soviet yeah. Republic. Now, yeah. now it's its own country, but at the time, I was born into Russia. So, so I remember, like, let me tell you something, man. One of, you know, there was like a group of families that all immigrated together. Yeah. One of the families had a son, and when the Russian guys in his neighborhood find out he's moving, he ended up getting killed. True story. True story. That's how deep the hatred out there goes. The hate. Go ahead. Yeah. From Russians to Jews. Jews can't get jobs at certain places. They can't go to certain universities. My, still, my parents still, had to go to. Still. Well, I don't know about still. Right, okay. We moved forty something yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, but at the yeah. time, at the time, it's it not was that like long that. ago. Not that long ago. Right. So Not that long ago. And so also Jews come from Poland too, right? It's Poland, Russia. Is it Eastern European? Eastern, right? It's a lot yeah. of Eastern European. Right. Jews from that. Got it. Because I know people from, like, from you to different, from different parts. My boy, uh, my boy, um, Oliver Pollack from Germany. When I did, did his, I was in Germany last year doing a, a tour with him. He's the only living Jewish comedian in all of Germany. Lives in Berlin, just moved. He writes books on anti-Semitism. Yeah, it's a book he writes, and he's a very controversial comedian. That's one of my good friends. His ma- his aunt, who lives in, S- in Central Park, is a surviving Holocaust. Uh, she's a Holocaust survivor. Aunt, real good lady. Yeah, so I understand all of that. You understand what I'm saying? My thing is this. When you're talking the way you talk about your discrimination, we I first of all, we're taught about how Jews have been discriminated against. You know why we're taught? Because you all make sure we learn about it. We learn about the Holocaust. Every other week is some Holocaust shit. Because you're like, if we remind you, the shit won't repeat again. Right? What does Japan do to make sure you don't try to do that Nagasaki Hiroshima, Hiroshima shit again? Like Truman did. Remember 1945? Boom. We're going to make sure you know about this shit every week on the History Channel so you don't do that shit again. Why do they show all this Hitler shit, the documentaries? Because we don't want that shit to happen again. Now, all the shit that Jewish people have gone through, we feel for you. I, I go like this. That's fucked up. My thing is that when it comes to us and we want to talk about our shit, Everybody tells us to shut the fuck up and move on. Move on. Everybody that's been oppressed, they move on. But you know how you move on? Like James Baldwin said, your history is your presence. Your history is your presence. You understand? The reason why black folk act the way they act, there is a reason for that kind of shit. It's the history. There's a reason why the police are the way they are with us. It's a history of them being that way to us. They purposely, they had slave catchers. There were badges called slave catchers. That's where the police was derived from. That is the reason why they act the way they act towards. There's a reason why the jails are full of black men. There's a reason. Historically, we need to know about that shit. We, listen, I can listen to the Holocaust and watch movies on it all day and feel for you because the shit is fucked up. What and Germans are still like when you bring it up in Germany, they won't. They we don't. We are embarrassed by that shit. Don't bring that shit up. I'll I'll take I'll take you one step further. Do it. I remember when I went to, when I went to Israel and and I did my whole tour around yes. Israel and had the tour guide yeah. break it all down. There's actually a reason why there's so many. You know you know why a stereotypical Jew is like a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. Why? It's because historically. Jews have gone into communities and had those communities turn against them and kick them out of those communities. Right. So they had to develop a skill set that was actually portable. See that? From in case they had to move. See that? Because so often they did. Right. Between 
between the Holocaust yep. and the Inqu and the Inquisition and all the other fo and, and Russia yeah. and everything else that that's happened yeah. throughout history. They said, "Look, man, uh, I could be a doctor uh, two countries over, I guess, but uh, <laughs> you know, I can't. Uh, let me not do something specific to this area because well, it might guys, not last." You guys were natural hustlers. Let's be real. That you yeah, guys, but 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 in terms of but in terms of you know, let me just address your question before we run off on yeah, a tangent. Yeah. Uh, there absolutely have been some very racist Jews out there, which I because don't... ultimately, ultimately, you know, here's here's what happens, right? Although in Russia, I was considered a Jew, and I there's a very big separation. Once my family came to America, we blended in with all the other white people. Well, right? which you're gonna be so, like, hell so, yeah, I'm gonna be white. Fuck this. They, they they blended in with, with, the, with the white people, and suddenly that that level of discrimination went away, w went away to a certain degree. So, did did certain Jews adopt the racist ideology of some American whites and so forth? A hundred percent. Right. Are there some foul, dirty ass, evil, conniving ass Jews? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I have met some of them. You know, I've had some of my own family that I, I dislike, and, and some of the stuff they've said around me is disgusting. Yo, like I feel you, but are there foul, evil black people, foul, evil Asian people, of Chinese, course. you know, Latinos, of Indians, and so forth? Of course. It comes. Goya it comes beans. in every. Fuck you. Yeah. I, 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 but, but to turn around and start saying that certain people are born evil, are born gotcha. wicked, gotcha. to say that melanin somehow encourages or lack of melanin makes people like less compassionate or whatever else, I'm not, I'm not going to buy that, man. I, I never will. And my thing I, is I never, you, you shouldn't will. have to. There's nothing wrong with disputing shit, but Nick Cannon has a good heart. Nick Cannon is a good dude. Nick Cannon is, 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 is just... You know, Nick Cannon has been a privileged kid for a long time. I know he came from some shit, but he's been a privileged yeah. kid as far as I've known him. And I don't, I'm not his best friend, but he's always been cool with me. I've interviewed him on when I was at Sirius XM. And he's always, and what, and as a businessman, he's one of the smartest business dudes, especially for young folks. He has the young, he has the young pulse all the time because motherfuckers going to look that way for a long time. Nick Cannon is a, a smart man, a talented dude. I know, I know Nick Cannon doesn't know what he wants to be because he's a singer one day, he's a comedian, he does a lot of shit. But one thing I do know is that fucker brings people work. He gives people work, he gives people a platform. And, and I think people go, well, you, what do you think about Nick Cannon apologizing? I said, I think he's smart as shit for doing that. Because Nick Cannon is looking at the bigger picture. This is what I'm thinking. He's looking at the bigger picture. I would rather Nick apologize and get off the ego shit real quick and, inst and and go, you know what? I need to keep this business shit going because I'd rather him hire more black people in this business than get taken all his shit taken away because of one little thing he said. Because he should be forgiven by the Jewish community because he legitimately apologized. Also, he talked to that rabbi. No matter whatever anybody agrees or agrees, disagrees, see, these conversations between Jewish people and the black community need to happen. We need to do it honestly. The arrogance needs to go away because, listen, I'm telling you, we admire the Jewish community because of your, you stick together, man. You motherfuckers work together. You keep it together. Black people want to be able to do that. We should be able to have black shit and only black shit like yeshiva. We have, it's all for Jewish people. That's it. Why can't we have shit? That's all for black people, but it doesn't mean we can't have alliances, but we need our own shit because we need it because that's how we grow. You don't grow mixing everything up when you're not complete. You guys are complete. Your history is complete. You, your schools are complete. Your education is complete. Your sense of self is complete. We are incomplete people, but yet we have one of the strongest cultures, but yet everybody's benefiting from it and we don't even love each other. Something is wrong there. And you know what? And, and that, that type of dialogue needs to come. And I think Deshaun was wrong by bringing out, first of all, you don't, you don't talk about the guy that murdered Jews and quote them. That's like, you know what that's like doing? That's like saying, quoting something from the Grand Imperial Wizard. We'd be like, the fuck are you talking about, dude? He's the Grand, it's the same thing saying to the Japanese, to do, uh, Tojo, you know, to Tojo, the dictator who murdered Japanese people. That's like seeing Pol Pot for the Vietnamese people. 
It, you you can't do right, that. Right. If I if I started giving Zimmerman quotes to try yeah, to justify yeah, my yeah. point, it's the same I don't shit. think anyone would feel me. We would want to kill your ass. We'd be like, right. if I if I told if I try to prove my point by quoting Dylan Roof, <laughs> let me just go ahead and say this. Okay. That Deshaun Jackson, the fact that he actually apologized for yes. what he said and is going to like a Holocaust Good. museum and, and and I Good. think he's actually visiting Auschwitz. Good. I think it's dope. It's I dope think it's great. Fuck. And and like like I explained on the Breakfast Club, I was I was from I do not remember a time in my life where I didn't know about Hitler and the Holocaust oh, right, and, and the right. slaughtering of Jews right. and everything else like that. Right. I don't expect a typical black person to have the same experience that I do. No. So I don't know, I don't know Deshaun Jackson's background, how much, you know, you know, how much uh, education he had, how much learning he had or whatever else. But if you don't really, if you just hear Hitler as a name, yeah. you may not understand yeah. who he is if you were not raised in the same way that I was. Yeah. So the fact that he said what he said, but then he apologized and is actually going through steps to actually figure out, you know, learning a few things he didn't know about, I think it's great. I think it's dope. Shout out to, to Deshaun Shout Jackson. I, I apologize for saying fuck Deshaun Jackson. Good. You know, I would love I, I would love to have him on my show at you one point. You should have Deshaun. And, I think he will come yeah. on your show. And, and the same thing. I mean, Nick is actually trying to learn and make amends. But my and so thing forth. is this too, though. What I want to see also is my Jewish brothers and sisters learning about the Black Holocaust and the shit go. that goes on now. The hundred million lives that was lost in the Middle Passage. The hundred right. million, and this is not a comparison on who slaughtering is slaughtering. If even if it's yeah. two motherfuckers, I want, I would like Jewish folks that are from your like country that that you, the Ashkenazi to go. Hey man, I'm learning about your shit, so they can understand why where the anger is coming from. Sometimes we slip and say, and and man, nobody man. That motherfucker Nick Cannon does not hate Jewish people at all. Fuck that. We don't. Do, we we envy you. We envy you as far as like I said before, as far as how together you guys are. And all we want is that for ourselves. But it seems like when we try to get that, people want to fuck it up for us. And we go, but yo, but why are you trying to ruin our shit when you you guys built your shit, but then you don't want us to have it? I and I think you know people really do have to be. You have to be well studied. This, it's no different than saying something about politics and religion and when you debate people. You got to know your shit. You got to be careful. You got to be careful on what you're doing. That's why I think Dushan Jackson is a, is a newbie when it comes to this. Um, Professor Griff has always been on this. He's always been that guy. Professor Griff is a different animal. He's always been that dude, been studying this for a long time. He don't have wilding out. He can give a care less about that shit. He can... But 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 everybody can't be on the soapbox. Everybody has to play their role in the black community. That's like me as a comedian. People will say, yo, Godfrey, man, you need to address the political situation. They killing all the elephants in Africa. And you know, I'm like, I'm a comedian, bro. You know, I, I listen, I play my part by telling my jokes. I come on your, which you give me the privilege to come on your show. We try to talk real shit. I try to do my part as far as as far as pushing the culture. Everybody does their part a different way. Everybody can't be Malcolm X. Everybody can't be, Ma no, it doesn't work that way. Being outspoken as a black person is, it can't be all of it, that's a monolith. There are some people that work in Hollywood behind the scenes that don't say anything that are pushing the culture. We have everybody in the medical field. There are people we all have different roles to play and you can't have everybody speaking out Let's talk, I mean, the fashion industry is so horribly racist and fucked up. Fashion models, black fashion models are suffering. They're fucking suffering. Black ballet dancers are suffering, but they gotta find a different way that they can't, all of them can't be outspoken, but there's gotta be a way that we can push the culture. So we have to have diff, we have to be designated to different things. Everybody can't be a fucking chief, man. You know what I'm saying? So. Dushan, I like that he's at least trying to be aware as a football player because all they think of it with athletes, you never hear athletes talk about anything conscious half the time. They're never talking about that. They're always Charles Barkling everything. That's terrible. That's horrible. How the hell are you going to talk about that, man? I can't believe what Ice Cube is doing. Shut the fuck up, Charles Barkley. Shut the fuck up. 
Ice Cube, look at what Ice Cube's doing in his own way. He's like, I'm gonna write out a little memorandum and we can work on it with different people. That is how we do it. We designate, I do the, we, you know, the, the comedians, we do, we do stuff on stage. We all work our way different ways. The politicians do their shit. If we all can do our shit and work the way your community works and not sell each other out like we all tend to do all the fucking time, a lot of us, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's how we need to, and then that's what we're, we're really just envious of that. And Nick Cannon is not hateful of the Jewish community, fuck no, and I like what he's done. And Nick Cannon is a very big asset to us, which is a fact. He gives people work. We need guys like Nick Cannon. And him saying sorry, it doesn't make him no punk. It doesn't make him not feel proud and black. And he still wants to push the culture. He just has to do it a different way. And next time, okay, I didn't do it right. And, and the fact that the Jewish community gives him a chance, I think I commend him for that. And not just go, fuck him, you're anti-Semitic. Can you look up, do me this favor, can you look up the word Semitic and what it means and read it? Google, this is Google. This is not BT Encyclopedia. This ain't Pan-Africanism. This ain't Dr. Umar Johnson. This is Google, go ahead. And I love Dr. Umar Johnson, by the way. Semitic, relating to or denoting a family of languages that include Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic, and certain ancient languages such as Phoenician and Akkadian constituting the main subgroup of the Afro-Asiatic family. Ooh, Number baby. two, relating to the people, peoples who speak Semitic languages, especially Hebrew, Hebrew and Arabic. So that would make you Semitic because you speak, right? The language, right? And am I right? Uh, yeah, I mean, basically it sounds like people who came from the Middle East. Okay, and actually there's really, is there a such thing as a Middle East? Because I heard there's no such thing really as a Middle East because there's no Middle West and Middle South. <laughs> But I'm saying northern Northern Africa, Northern, northern Africa, Africa and that, that area. Yeah, and the motherfuckers was dark, black motherfuckers. I don't care because I always say Jesus was a black dude because they go why? Because he went through black dude problems. <laughs> motherfuckers crucified for no reason. What the fuck do you think happens to us now? And no blonde dude is going through the shit. If Jesus was blonde, you would see no pain and no suffering in any of those scriptures, motherfucker. And there would be sunburn scriptures. <laughs> so Jesus, oh, 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 the sun is intense at the fifth. Is now they talk. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, but, but I, God like, free. like I said, I think that, and, and, and this is not some um, kumbaya shit. I really believe that, that um, black people and Jewish people, we could really get out on some next level shit. If we just drop all that dumb ass shit and know that we are on your side and you we need y'all to be on our side like a motherfucker. We can be like dope. It's like, it's not that hard. We can be dope. Fuck all that. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. And I'm gonna tell you, man, your bakeries be tight to the motherfucking dog. Shit. I be challah bread? Challah bread? Shh. What is, what is, what is Kabbalah spelled backwards? Challah back. Come on now. But man, listen, as a, as a, as a Jewish man, most of my success throughout my life has been with black people. Uh, you know, most of my relationships have been with black women. Um, you, you know, uh, most of my friendships have been with, with black men. You know, through, through the majority of my life. Not, not always, but you know, from a certain, from a certain age, age forward. Comfortable around us, you're used to it. And you know, it, and, 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 and come on, isn't it fun? <laughs> <laughs> But yo, man, and, yeah. and, and we're, yeah. and we're I, I mean, I mean, and, and, and let me just say this. Yeah. Uh, I really don't do a lot of things with the Jewish community at all. Like I haven't gone to I, a I synagogue since that. I was I like 13. Uh, I, yeah, I don't go to I, church. I, mean, I don't go to church. Uh, <laughs> right, right. My but I'm thing saying, is, like, how I don't, are you treating people? I don't care what you read. I don't care where you bow. I don't care what's on your head. I don't give a fuck about that. We're human beings. And it's about how you treat people in your day-to-day -day life. I don't give a shit about any of that. How are you treating the next man and woman? Period. You ain't got to be best friends with anybody. You don't even have to like a person. But the respect, a respecting of a person's place in life is what, the, is this, it, that's the whole thing. But this whole fighting is all about control, really. I really believe it's about control and money. When it comes down to it, 
let's start this, let's start that, let's start this, so we can have our own, blah, 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 that bullshit. But when it really comes down to the core of being a human being, it's like, hey, man, you cool? I'm cool. All right, have a good day. I'm gone, man. There That's you it. Go. There you go. Yes, That's sir. how we're going to end it. Godfrey, hey! always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Yo. Make sure you check out the Godfrey God, uh, now, in, podcast. And Godfrey We Trust on the Godfrey Gas Digital Trust. Network. Subscribe. Follow me, Comedian Godfrey, on my Instagram and my, my what is it, my Twitter is Godfrey Comedian and all that good stuff. Shout out to the Negro League's 100 year anniversary and all that other good stuff. And this was awesome. It was a good Until talk, man. Time. Yes, sir. I'm glad we got Peace. to it. I'm sweating. Yes, sir. Yes, sweating, sir. Sweating, man. I'm sweating, man. <laughs> Peace.